So this portion here, um, I did take a few of those those minutes. Um, <laughs> one of my team said, yeah, Kelsey sounds a lot like you, Sam. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no joke. Okay, but that's that's why I love um, I love what we're able to do and, and who we're able to talk to. So let's uh, transition, Tiff. Do you have the list of questions? And if not, then I have some for, for myself. But you have the questions that people have been messaging you. Yes, I have one for Kelsey. Um, how do you ensure you are making your business du duplicatable while still trying to find a way to be yourself and do things differently? I've always heard it doesn't matter what works, it matters what duplicates. Just some guide guidance on what would be helpful. Thank you. Yeah, that's um, that's a really good question because I'll tell you right now, my du my business is not duplicatable. As it stands right now, duplicating what I've done in business is that's not that's not an easy thing to do. However, when we bring people on board, what we're we are really focused on as leaders, and like I said, I partner with a lot of other SMDs because they have most of my team, right? Um, but specifically, there are four people that I partner with to bring um, a very aligned drop by, a very aligned fast start. We started doing training on discovery calls that we used um, to book interviews and then the interview itself. So those four things um, were really key in terms of training new people, right? So even though my specific social media business isn't duplicatable, we could make the drop by duplicatable. Um, and, and, you know, that drop by still has areas where people can insert their own personality or what they are passionate about. That was something that we felt important to include, right? So that's a duplicatable thing that's still able to be authentic. Um, the fast start specifically is very aligned between all of our leadership. Um, you know, fast, fast starting people, I think, is authentic in itself because you're just having a one on one conversation with that person. And so I think you're allowed to be a little bit more vulnerable as a leader. Um, but that discovery call part and the interview itself, that's when you can really be like, here's who I am as, le as a leader. You know, this, the system, the structure might be completely duplicatable, but when you show up to that system and structure, you can say, here's who I am, here's what I expect, boom, 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 and you can be authentically yourself, right? Um, and then I will say that I do a lot of training on the, the FNA process, um, but really the- yeah, some, some, yeah. some people on here are brand new, so yeah. explain what FNA stands for and maybe explain what a map is as well. Oh, sure. Yeah. So um, the financial needs analysis or the gathering of information before putting a plan together, we do a lot of training on duplicating that. And then um, a map is basically, uh, I don't remember the exact um, words for it, but it's basically sending one of your recruits to another base shop where they can get more in-depth training. And there's a, a commission split an override split on that. So I only get 25% override of everyone that I map and the receiving SMD gets 75%. Um, but yeah, that, that authenticity really does come inside of those systems. You just have to find where to put it. And I know it's hard when you're trying to be duplicatable, but um, you're gonna have to practice being authentic inside of duplicating systems. Question, follow up question on that, Kelsey. When you're doing that, who ensures that all the people that are in the, the startup phase, the discovery process, like that, that initial process, um, who ensures that everybody's following your system at least up to the point of mapping somebody? Do you have uh, personally or does somebody else, do you have somebody else who says, okay, you're now qualified to be one of these people? Yeah, that's, that's me. I'm the one qualifying and unqualifying people, as you might imagine, some people were fired from the job. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if they couldn't follow the system or if they felt it was not authentic enough for them to be able to be successful inside of that, then I, I politely removed them from that. But I was the one determining um, who would be a part of that. And then that SMD, once they were determined to be able to do that, they took that system and they made it authentically their own inside their base shop. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's crucial. There is a level of control by her about the the startup and there's a book called pitch anything i recommend it to everybody um 
but how you frame the approach of something is going to ultimately dictate what somebody's success. So framing that conversation properly. Thank you, Kelsey. Uh, okay, go Tiff, if you have other questions. Uh, yes, I have two. Um, one, this is a question for uh, anyone on the panel. Um, Let's I pick somebody. I Let's say Elise Black. Okay. So I help fast start uh, people and I, I know what people struggle with or with their, their every, we all have our own struggles that we go through with. So what is something that you can share that you overcome? Like, what did you overcome and how did you overcome it to get where you had to switch your mindset to make things happen for you? Great question. So hello everyone. My name is Elisa Black. I'll be introduced a little bit later on. Thank you uh, to for this opportunity and to meet you all. So basically you're asking what's a, for a new person, you know, something that maybe was like a struggle and how did you get over it kind of a thing, if I'm understanding the question correctly. Is that what it sounds like? Like a fear or something at the beginning? Yeah, just yeah. something that you like, it could be anything, anything that you struggled with that you um, had to accomplish. Because a lot of times we hear what people accomplished, but we don't hear what they, the, the steps they had to do to accomplish that, the, the behind of that, of what you accomplished. Yeah, so that'll be a big part of when I present, I'll be talking about some of those things, but I can answer with one here while we're doing this panel. Um, a big thing for me was fear of running out of people to talk to. And so a little bit about my background, just briefly, my dad is the one that recruited me. I was his third recruit. Uh, he is going to go CEO this month and we've been in the business for six years. So, uh, <laughs> you'd think having an example, like, like my dad, who's just cruising, I'd be like, obviously I'm never going to run out of people, you know, or things like that. But for whatever reason, that was part of my, just never having a business background, never being, seeing this kind of world. It was like a scarcity mindset, a fear that I had that somehow, you know, maybe I'm not going to make it um, because I'll run out of people to talk to. And so one of the things that I did actually in order to get over that is I, had to do kind of, I, I caught most of Kelsey's, I think, presentation. I had to hit my rock bottom, which was I had to quit all other income streams besides this one. And when I did that and I had to find people, I did. And three years, I'm having more people than ever to talk to. So I had to cut off my safety net and make it happen. So that'll be kind of maybe my brief answer to that question. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. All right, this next question is for Kelsey. Why do you say what you do on social media is not duplicatable? Can't someone just go do what you are doing? Yeah, that's a great question and I get it. I get that question a lot, actually. Um, so first things first, what I will tell you is going viral is never, never predictable. And this period of end of story, right? Um, but I do have a specific personality and way of speaking about things that is, is, it's just very hard for someone to emulate me, right? And on social media, when personality is kind of everything in terms of driving followers and views, especially in videos, you know, I can't tell my 60 year old ex CPA friend to go make videos like I do and have them be successful. They've tried, they're not, um, which is why I preach authenticity so much because someone being authentic in a different way could probably emulate some of the results I've had on social media, but ultimately you can't watch my videos, emulate them and experience the same success. That's just not how algorithms work in social media land. Um, and that's what we have found, right? There have been many, many people trying to emulate what I've done on social media. It hasn't not worked at all. We've not seen hardly any results. Um, but if you find the way that you, you can present your own brand, your authentic brand, that could be different, right? But ultimately watching my videos and trying to make the same video, it's not gonna work. Can, can I just add clarification to that? 
So um, as far as what's duplicatable and what's not duplicatable, there's a, there's a difference between process that's duplicatable as far as like, again, the system of WFG is just the same six steps. Every one of us go through those systems differently. Is it probably a good idea for every person on this call to have some form of social media presence and be posting regularly on at least four or five different platforms? Absolutely, because you never know which one's gonna hit. As a, as a way for Kelsey to say, oh, come follow me and do exactly what I do and you will be successful, she can't make that promise because she can't guarantee that somebody else is gonna go viral and be that way. So she still has to coach people into a different system or, or different have daily habits than what she's currently doing because of the, the, the freak of nature thing that happened where she, got, she went viral and it's not a guaranteed thing. So, so understand the difference between what's duplicatable from a, a systemic perspective. Yes, the same six, she's still doing the same thing. She's prospecting on social media by posting videos. Some people, if that's all you did, you're gonna be broke and you're never gonna make any money. And so exactly. she can't say this is the way that's gonna work for you. What will work for you is go find, go prospect and find three to five people every day, as, as PJ said, that are got, you're, if you do that, you're, you're gonna be successful. Now, how you find those people, that's up to you. The bottom line is you have to find the people. So if you try social media, it's not working, continuing to do something that's not working just because somebody else is doing it and it's working for them, that's asinine. That's the definition of insanity. If it doesn't work, stop doing it, okay? So, or stop relying on that being the only thing. You can still do social media. It's just she can't promise you success through that model. And so, I, I don't know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Kelsey, but I think it is important. If you, the more you understand about social media, the more you'd understand why it's like, hey, this isn't necessarily duplicatable. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll say this, Sam. Um, the approach and contact step of our business is where you need to be authentic, but I can't even emulate my own results. So good luck, you guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, awesome. Okay, next question, Tiff. Um, that was it that I have. Okay, perfect. Well, then I have some. Let's go with uh, Kristen. So, Kristen, uh, in this era of transferring online, um, and this is, we, we kind of heard how Kelsey has built her team, even though she's got a lot of recruits and a lot of business partners all over the, the country, she's farmed them out. She's mapped them out. There's other people, and I'm, I'm one of those people who I haven't really mapped out my team. I'm running an online team, but for you, Kristen, what does your team look like and how did you transition or, or build a team and build team com camaraderie online through Z Zoom presentations? Gotcha. Sorry, I had to mute myself by sneezing. Um, you. Thank you for that. Uh, so how do I do that? Because no, I don't do a lot of mapping, so I'm probably the complete opposite of what Kelsey does. But um, she did talk about branding. And that's one of the things that I'm very big on. I'm very heavy on, and that's how I'm able to recruit. So most of my recruiting is done on social media platforms as well. Um, I have a steady, like, you know, we hear three, three thirty in the business. I know every month I'm going to do at least my three from social media. And that's because I build relationships with people. And a lot of times people don't realize I'm building relationships with them before they even come into the company, but that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, a lot of people have been on my social media uh, training, which I'm more Facebook than Instagram. So that's two different worlds, if anyone doesn't know that, because um, Instagram is just a completely different model, right? And there's different types of people on Instagram. And although I am technically a millennial, I'm like an old soul spirit millennial. Um, so I just like to talk more, right? I like to show people my heart. I'm not so much with pictures and lifestyle, because that to me is more Instagram. I'm more of, hey, this is who I am. So of course, Kelsey talked about authenticity, very authentic. And you've been on my page, Sam, where sometimes I call it the hug punch hug, where one day I'll start out with a hug and I'll like inspirational and they're like, oh, that's so great. And then I'll hit them with, you're not successful because you're not doing work. Bye. You know, then I'll come back and be like, oh, you're wonderful, but you are. But I'm just telling the truth as I go about my day. And so because of that and me being real, when people every time and I don't again, Instagram is different from Facebook. I don't go in people's inboxes like I don't have to because I go in these groups. 
I get social with these people. I add them as friends. I do not hop in inboxes when I add as friends. I'm just adding you as a friend so you can come see me in my world and fall in love with who I am. And like she said too, not everybody's gonna like you. And I get that too, and that's okay. My mama taught me that at a very young age. Not, not everybody's gonna like you. So that's the same thing when you're an adult and you're in business. Um, but once they come onto my page because of how I branded myself, and you'll see that even I have kind of changed my brand, maybe as you've been following me, because I've been Kristen the retired nurse for two years now. It's time to hang that up. We get it. I left my job. I'm doing this business. I make six figures. I have a wonderful life. But now guess what I am? I'm the expert at what you need. So you have to figure out a way to be the expert in people's life. One, to show them that they do have a problem. And then two, to say, I'm the one that's going to solve that problem. Whether that be with money, whether that be with freedom, whether that be with just, you know, looking for just some kind of extra stream of income, whatever your problem is, I'm the problem solver. So that's the brand that I'm now switching to and building now. And so again, people come on and they'll message me and say, I've been following you for six months. I know. <laughs> You've been lurking because you like stuff and then you comment and then, you know, you don't say anything else and then you come like stuff. Yeah, I know that you've been watching me. I said, so, you know, glad you finally have the courage to come message me. What is it I can help you with? And I don't carry a lot of conversation on in an inbox. I want to get you on an appointment. I want to meet with you. I want to see who you are. And when I sit down and give the information, I had one of my uh, CFTs. And this goes to dupl being duplicatable. But she was like uh, sitting off to the side and she's like, I've watched you do three appointments. And even though you had the same slides, it was different. Each time it was like, she's like, how did you do that? I said, before I get into any type of content, you got to learn who a person is. Ask them questions about themselves because people love talking about what? Themselves. If you're quiet enough, you have two ears and one mouth, you'll be able to listen to what someone needs right in the first five minutes, who they are, what's important to them. Once I've keyed into that, oh, wow, what's important to you is you're taking care of your mom right now and she's experienced spin down. Dang, you're listening to you right now. That really sucks. I'm about to talk to you about financial solutions to keep you from going into spin down. That's what I'm going to do. And so then if someone says, man, I hate my job, da, 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 in the first five minutes, that's all they're talking about. Although I'm going through the same slides, when we get to recruiting, I'm heavy on that. And I'm like, man, let me tell you, I hated my job too. Those people try to tell me when to come and go, how to jump, yada, yada, how to miss Thanksgiving, Christmas. And they're like, really? Yeah, that's me. Find a way to relate to people. And they tell you how to do that in the first five minutes. But yeah, that's how I build my brand and my authenticity with people is they just feel like I'm a real, regular, relatable person. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's another question that came in and I'll, I'll, anybody can answer this, but I think, um, because I know Kelsey and Kristen, you guys both talked about branding. Where did you guys learn about personal branding? Did you have a coach teach you that or did you just trial and error and eventually that's the words that you're using but you don't really know what you're talking about? Not, not that you don't know the, the, faction, the factual about it, but like, did you get coached on it or did you just figure it out? Um, so since I'm already off mute, I'll answer first and I'll let her go. But uh, so what people don't know about me is I actually did... Um, other companies before World Financial Group. One of those was uh, It Works, <laughs> the body wraps and everything. Like that was my first, well, that was my second attempt. I'll say second. My second attempt at freedom. I was trying to do something to get out of my job. I was the person that I would wrap you in a porta potty. Actually, I wrap people in some very odd places. But um, because those platforms were really big social media platforms, I learned my branding through them and they actually had you know like trainings on branding so i just brought that over to wfg and i remember people saying like you can't be online doing this i was like yeah, i can why not like this is free it's people everywhere it's people everywhere like hey it's like smorgasbord so that's how i learned my branding actually from another company awesome apparently it didn't work though um i'm just teasing that's a play <laughs> on words <Yeah. laughs> okay go for it kelsey <laughs> Um, yeah, so I I haven't been heavy on um, personal branding myself. I actually do work with VIP Social um, from Wealthwave, but what I will tell you is that was not the source of my success, although they do manage my personal branding very well now. Um, I was just trying to figure out what a good handle, like a, like a um, social media username would be, and I went to sleep one night and at two in the morning, I was like, the money, honey, 
And then I just like got on and changed everything right away. And that seemed to be, you know, the, the jump start to my personal brand. So I'm actually learning as I go, um, which has been really cool. And it's, it's helpful to have VIP social partnering with me. Um, but we're, we are all learning together. Um, and real quick, Sam, uh, just to interrupt you, I do have to start driving to my next appointment. So I have to, um, be done. Exit okay. the chat, if you will. I apologize, but thank you guys so much for having me. And, um, I hope this was helpful. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. See you, Kelsey. <clears throat> okay. So let's, let's talk. Uh, I want, uh, so we had, uh, let's have PJ answer the next one. PJ, you muted yourself. I think PJ. You got, it. You. you got it. Okay. So PJ, how have you built? Cause you, you recruited a lot of people in a short period of time. How did you build? And I, I've asked your, your EVC this, the same thing. But how did you build um, your team remotely? Like I know there's a good portion that's in California with you, but where did like how are you building and creating a community that people want to join and maintaining a training standard remotely um, through Zoom or any other thing you're doing? I think uh, remember our team is like uh, built on Zoom. We be, we became SMB through Zoom. We build another SMB through Zoom. But we were able like to see each other in person like last August 2021. Like it's a, a team bonding for us. It's like a retreat. And then another way is like during our well bowl, it's in person already. So we were able like to meet each other in person as well. So the daily basis, I think what we do is like we we can we can we can we do have meeting, but in in for informal sum. It's not like you have to sit down, you have to look formal. <laughs> So that's true. What Kelsey said and Kristen said, you have to be authentic. You know, you have to be be your be yourself. I know that we are in the business, but at the same time, we have to be you know be ourselves. So whenever we 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 build each each other in the in the team, we just call each other via Facebook Messenger or via FaceTime or whatsoever, just to be in a group. And then you know we build relationship, and that's the most important thing. Because you can never ever build a person without knowing them. You know, that's the most important thing in the business. We we have the system in WFG, the six steps, but at the same time, if we don't know that person personally, and if we're not able to like build a relationship with, with them, we're not gonna be able to build them at all. No matter how they're talented, how I how much we are talented in the team, we cannot build a person without the relationship. And I think that's the most important thing in the business, right? We have to know each other, the deepest that we could, you know, what's going on with our life. Sometimes, most of the time, some, I mean, if you can like, if I, uh, if I, if I'm gonna tell you guys, not all the time that we talk is about business, you know? We have to talk to them. We have to listen to our partners. We have to listen to them so that we're, not, we're gonna know how can we help them. It's like being a physical therapist. That's what I always like tell with our, I think we're doing good right now because we're in a healthcare before and now in a, we're in a well care. So we're able like, to be trained as to be a listener in our patients so that we can cure them, right? They, we can cure their physical disabilities or physical needs, right? But here we're gonna be able like to cure them, help them build if we're gonna be able like to listen more of them. So it doesn't need like the business way, the business uh, thing, you know, we don't have to be technical all the time. You know, we don't have to be in Zoom sitting so that I'm going to make sure that, oh, you're Sam, you have to be listening to me. This is the goal, blah, blah, blah. No matter how you put all the goals there, if you cannot connect with them, it's just useless, <laughs> right? Sure. So it's very important we were able like to connect. So okay? how, what are you doing? Like, what's the process for you to actually connect over Zoom? Is it a specific time during the, the day that you block out time and say, hey, this is the time where I'm doing like personal relationship building outside of business? Or is it, do you have Zoom parties where everybody gets, I mean, I've tried everything at this point. So I'm, 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 I'm wanting to know, that Dan wants to know, probably everybody here wants to know, like how do you build those relationships? We've got group chats going, we've got Facebook groups going, we've got a lot of stuff going, but there, there's still a level, at least for me, of uh, people, we've been, COVID was good for a lot of things, but it got a lot of people isolated. And 
now it's almost people like the isolation. They don't like it, but they like it. As in, they're out of practice of engaging. Um, yeah. and, and now they have to get back to the gym of engagement and it's not comfortable. Even though they want the results of engagement, they actually don't want to engage because it's uncomfortable. And so we're trying to pull people out of these shells and build relationships. Um, what's the process and how, do you, how did you create the culture so that it's not just a leader having to build all those relationships, but people throughout the team are building those relationships? Yeah. To be honest, Sam, uh, like for example, like calling your partners, sometimes it happens at night, <laughs> in the middle of the night. It's like family, you know? You're, you can call your family anytime, right? So same thing with your partners. You don't have to make boundaries that, hey, I'm not in a business right now, so you cannot call me at this time. But for us, we, call, we can call each other anytime. We have an access. As long as, we are, or as long as we're available, then we can talk to them. But most majority of the call happens at night. Like, to be honest, in the middle of the night. <laughs> we sometimes sleep at 2 a.m. just to talk to them. You know, imagine that. Or sometimes 3 a.m. because we're like talking from Pacific time to East Coast time. You know, we're talking to each other. And we were able like to kind of like, go back to a routine because I, I remember what Chuan taught us before, like last year when we met him in the Gold Street office, in his office. He taught us that Zoom is good. Zoom is very good for transaction. But when you wanted to build people, you have to be with them in person. So when they started lifting off like, like the other, I remember like, okay, you can now travel, blah, blah, blah. Then that's the time we started traveling you know, going to their places. Sometimes you just go to their house, you know, you don't have to be in the business mode. Just just be with them, you know. Feel that, let them feel that you are, you really care. It's not just you go to the house, okay, make sure that I have a lot of BPM and F and A to C, you know. That, that doesn't work, you know. You have to just like be, be a person, be your real human to them, help them, see them. You know, just just be just spend a day, just spend time with them, and I think that's the most important thing. Like what Penny always said, people really care how much you care for them, right? And mm -hmm. that's the most important thing. So when when they started like lifting off all the bands, you know, we're able like, to travel. I personally went to like San Diego, went to like uh, Los Angeles. You know, there's no business stuff there. I just want to like be a person, be human. And help them see them, you know, feel them, so that I can help them, right? So I was able, like, now to go to to Las Vegas last month. You know, we we go different places now, because the thing is, that's what we've learned. You know, you have to be able to implement what you what you what you've heard, what you've heard from the leaders, and what have you learned, right? So for that reason, you're gonna be able to build them, because it's really neat. It's very important in person. I know Zoom is good. We still call each other like every day, every day. It's just like you're having a relationship as boyfriend or girlfriend. <laughs> you know, you call each other, right? That's how you're interested to people, right? You have to be interested with them because the business is all about people, right? It is. Hey, that that's good. That's a good, <laughs> good analogy. You have to pretend that like you, you uh, mm. are boyfriend and girlfriend again. And it it's true. Like you got to court these people. Um, and help them see that you're interested in their success and it's not just a quick flash in the pan. So I, I appreciate that. I know, uh, Alisa, you wanted to add into this this question as well as how do you do this and how do you build those relationships? Yeah, so we, our office is 100% on Zoom still. And so some of the stuff that I've noticed that's super helpful for building relationships and growth in a hierarchy. I mean, we've had, we had, um, this is speaking for my dad a little bit now. So I'm one of his nine SMDs that came out during these last two years of the pandemic. And so some of the things that have made that possible are doing things like well, a lot with snail mail, actually. So we're doing a thing right now where for every recruit, you're getting a special card in the mail, a collectionable item, kind of like a baseball card, almost kind of a thing. And so every group of 100 recruits has a specific collector's card. And so did you get one of the first 100 cards? And then when that one was closed, it's the second collections item. And so these cards are being sent out in the mail. And so some people are having a tangible thing, even though they're all over the country, that lets them know we see you and we hear you. We've seen your good work and you're getting this thing. 
Um, I've also found a lot of online programs that send things out as well. So I just promoted a new associate on my team. I, with a click of a button, I sent her a treat, you know, that's going to come to her, her mailbox, you know, things like that. Um, different little award things where, okay, great. You did the contest this month. I'm door dashing a pizza to your house right now. So things like that, where we're, you know, touching each other, even though we're across the country from each other. So those were some other ideas that, that I thought I would share with you guys. Awesome. Well, I, I, on a follow up there, Lisa, just cause it's, it's a question and that, and, uh, I'm, I'm learning, and this is something that come, comes into play because people, there's two sides of the business I found. There's people who treat uh, WFG like, a, hey, you basically can, can do all this wonderful stuff and it's very inexpensive to run a business here. So your profit margins are great. Then there's other people who run it like a business and then they have a little bit more overhead because of these costs, right? So to send somebody something to, to do those extra little things, they cost money and that has to be somebody who buys into that. So what have you found or what was the mental process that you had to go through to say, you know what, all of these little touches that yes, they cost $5 here, $10 there, whatever, they are all worth it in the long run. Because that's a mental process that there's people on this call who have just started or have been here for five years and like, yeah, I don't know that I want to invest that into my team because I don't know if I'm going to get a rate of return or they're not even thinking that far. They're thinking, I don't have money for that. Um, and how did you overcome that belief system about what you could and couldn't do and said, you know what, it, it's worth it because the, the individual that I'm, I'm connected to is worth it. Great question. So number one, I get some of my financial personal business coaching from Sean and Jamie Villalobos. That's whose hierarchy I'm in. And Sean always says 20% of your income is going into your business. And that's for into your team, into a personal assistant, whatever it is. But 20%, if you're a real business owner, that's at least as much as being reinvested into your business. And so if you want this to, to be a business and pay you like a business, that's what you do. And so especially somebody coming into a business, I had no idea, you know, costs and things that might go into it. Um, that was super helpful to just kind of think 20% is covering, you know, my office dues, my assistant, you know, these different things into the team. And so if I want to put more into my team, cause I'm, my love language is gift giving. <laughs> so I love spending money on my team. If I want to do more, I just got to make more <laughs> and then that, my 20% is bigger. Um, but another, another, uh, part of that, I think too, is if you're feeling stuck in your business, then maybe you should <laughs> do something about that so you can get to the next level. And maybe it's that you're not investing monetarily into your business and that's why you're, you are where you're at. So just maybe consider that if you want to make more money, maybe put more money into it. Yeah. And it's an interesting thing uh, that you have to make that decision first. I know that every time I've made more investment into my team or my business, my income just keeps going up. So, um, it gets to a point where you have to start looking for ways to invest back into your business and, and look for ways to invest into your team. Cause there's two types of, there's two types of capital. We can call it that there's business capital and then there's human capital. Business capital is assets that you have assets under management, maybe, uh, yeah, basically assets under management. Human capital is the investments, the small deposits you're making in to the relationships and the training of the people around you. And this business is heavier than most in a human capital asset, right? We, for, for this business to run properly um, at, and at a high level of efficiency, we have to invest even more into human capital and understanding human capital than a McDonald's does. McDonald's, their human capital is very, very low. They can literally take a hobo off the street and put them in and with two weeks of training, they could be flipping your burgers, right? They can take their human capital, their need to develop human capital is very, very low because of their system. Our system relies heavily on deep human capital, deep pockets when it comes to human capital. And it's if that's something that's just good to know and recognize when we start out, right? When we're, when we're getting into this. Um, so 
I, I'm gonna, this is to anyone who can, anyone on the panel who can a answer this, because I think this applies to, it's a bigger question, and maybe some of you guys have nailed this down better than others, but the question is, uh, it's a long question. I'm gonna try and summarize it, because I don't think it needs to be worded this much. Essentially, you have to learn something new. In this case, they're talking about social media. How do you manage engaging in social media and can managing your one-on-ones, training meetings, everything you're supposed to do, it feels like learning a new skill, social media, and doing everything else is just overwhelming and super daunting. Um, how do you manage that process of doing both? And anybody can answer that. And if nobody has an answer, then I will answer it. But I will say that um, I think people find it challenging because they're making it hard. It really isn't. Um, you're putting it in two different boats when really you can put it in all the same one because when you're on social media, if you're being yourself and you talk to multiple people a day in person, right? Just translate that onto your page, right? And so then we keep thinking like, oh, I got to separate the two when that's really not necessary. And so when I have a thought, I'm sitting here, say I'm interacting with a person, then they say something and I say something and I say, man, that's actually a pretty good point. Let's point on social media, puts the phone down, you know, and then you get to interacting with someone else out here and you guys are at an event, take a picture, put in a little caption. We love changing lives. I mean, like, I think we think too much about it and that's why people aren't doing it or they want to be perfect. I've heard that too. So I don't want to post anything if it's not perfect. There are no perfect people in this earth. Like, why are you trying to be perfect on a platform? Are you serious right now? Like, no, that doesn't even make sense. So just be you. Because if you put perfect out, and people are like, oh, I can't be like her or him. Yeah, they're too perfect. And that's just, then you're going to repel. You think you're actually attracting when you do that, but you're actually pushing people away. So go live. You know, I tell me on people that too. But what if I stutter or stumble? I actually was born stuttering. Like I used to stutter really bad as a kid and I still do it to this day. Do I care? No, because there's probably someone else out there that stutters and they're like, oh wow, she just stuttered on a live. I feel like I can do this. So you're just, you know, translating what you do in normal life just onto the platform, that's all. Awesome, I, I agree. I was gonna say a very similar thing. You're not doing something different. It's part of your everyday activities. It's part of just being you more in a mug, more public forum. You're not being somebody else. If you're thinking you need to be somebody else, you're starting from the wrong position. And and I'll just tell you, I've attracted people because um, I used to try and do different things. And I have attracted people who thought I was somebody different. They meet me online. We build this relationship online. Then they meet me in person. They're like, well, you're nothing like I thought you were going to be. I'm like, well, I'm still me, you know? And they're like, well, maybe maybe be a little bit more intellectually honest about who you are online. You know, I was like, okay, well, I, I didn't know that I was being perceived that way because it was a subconscious filter. I wasn't trying to filter myself through there. It just, you want to put a certain image out there or you only post the highlights of your day. You only post the positive memories. If you, you go look at my Facebook post right now, uh, and this is a good example, uh, my, my little sister just passed away. Uh, I say just, it was a month ago, but it still feels like just yesterday. Um, and so uh, all these people are writing all the wonderful memories of my sister and I love my sister wholeheartedly if you go read my post it's like a book so just beware but my post is not just nest all the good things but it's all of the fights all the major turning points and fights that we had in our life between my sister and I and why they were impactful for me right for me it's a very positive post but for most people it's like why are you dragging all this old dirt up well, because all of that old dirt made me who I am, and it's okay to share the darkness or the pain. People need to see that, and people connect with it. And I think that that's a very powerful thing to be aware of. Um, so that, that would be my answer to that. So, Mary, I want to ask you. Can you I say something about that first? Absolutely. Um, Go for it. Uh, since I'm, I'm a little bit older, I wasn't not born with uh, social media in my, in my genes. And um, I... I I want to say something to maybe the older people or even younger people whose social media is just not in your genes because I have met some younger people people that way too. Um, if that is a problem, just stick with the standard format. And then once you get that one down, then move, start moving into the social media. 
because some people just are not always on their phone or not always doing that. Okay, so ask me your question. Yes, no, I, I appreciate that, Mary, because you're <laughs> so right. I actually am one of those people who don't love social media, and I, I, I'm more of a, a, a lurker. Is that what you call this, Kristen? Uh, I'm, I'm a lurker, for sure. Um, but that's okay, I've learned habits to, to get more engaged. So the question that I have is through COVID, one, how did COVID impact your business? I know you went senior marketing director right in the middle of COVID, but how did COVID affect you? How did it affect the mentality of your team? And how did you corral your team to either see COVID as a blessing rather than something that was gonna halt or, or hurt their business? The answer for that time. I think after Mary, gonna, after Mary, PJ, we're gonna okay. let Mary answer first, then you can answer. Okay, <laughs> so um, that's a really interesting one because I've, like I said in, in the chat, I've done my whole business online. I've never been in an office because my SMD, and who is my recruiter, and you'll hear more about this in my story a little bit later, but what is, you know, four hour drive away and um, nobody else up in my, my area. So I, I've done it all online. And, and, and so, and he had a vision of doing things online. So we were already doing things online. So in that way, it, it didn't change a lot. Um, in another way, um, we had a lot of changes in my, my personal life. Um, so it, it and that, that really doesn't relate to other people, but, but my husband had a kidney transplant, right? Very first month of COVID. And so that really changed our lives. And, um, and so um, we've just had to keep going, keep going, keep going. I like to call it just like chipping away at that. Feels, sometimes it feels like there's this huge obstacle and COVID did feel like a huge obstacle to some people and we just kept chipping away. Another thing that really helped us is we have the best leadership in, in all of, of, of World Financial Group. And the leadership said, let's shift quickly. Whereas other companies just didn't shift. And, and so we just, we just moved. Okay. Thank okay, you. Okay, go for it, PJ. I'm let PJ go. And then, and then, Deanne, I want you to answer the same question after PJ. Wow, Mary, you have the same story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with my husband as well. So, yeah, we took advantage of the, you know, I know pandemic is bad, you know, but at the same time, sometimes we have to look on the brighter side, right? I think we were not be gonna be able to be right here right now without the Zoom era. You know, we cannot be like working two to three jobs seven days a week as a PT and doing the business. Because by the time that we go home, it's already late, you know. At least we have the Zoom, we can still get trained and we can still talk to people. Because if we're gonna do that, like if we don't if we if if we do if we do that during part time, it's gonna be so hard for every healthcare workers. You know that healthcare workers, they work what? Eight to 12 hours a day and sometimes seven days a week, right? So with, uh, with the Zoom era, we were able to connect to people easily across the US. You know, you're just here in California and then later on you're talking to New Yorker people, to Arizona, to Texas people, you know? It's very easy. So that's what we try to leverage with our partners. You know, you don't have to spend so much gas or like, you know, go driving for hours and hours just to see, just to meet this person. Because in the Zoom era, one click away, okay, we're, we're going to meet a person, a new person, right? One touch away, you're going to be able to connect. That's why we always say it's easy nowadays compared to our, what our leaders does before. You know, we are grateful for our leaders because before they said they have to go to their different houses knock on the door and they don't know if that person is there inside the house, right? But nowadays, you know, if there's like any like, uh, like rescheduling of appointment, it's gonna be easier, right? You, you, did not you did not have to drive like four hours. You don't have to like uh, spend so much with the gas, especially with the inflation right now, right? So it's very easy, very convenient. With a Zoom, you know, you can access everywhere. Even we even talk to Can Can Canadian people sometimes, right? You can you can connect easily. You don't have to to buy plane ticket. That that's why it's you know the the business is so easy, and and then the cost effective is less now compared before. So that's why we try to like leverage the the Zoom, you know. And then the moment that that this person we see that oh I think he's gonna be a good potential leader. 
he really wanted it. And then that's the time that we can fly to their place and do the super BPM one Saturday, something like that. Yeah, I love that. And that's something that you and Kelsey both talked about that I wanted to highlight is, and everybody on this call, you got to ask yourself, are you willing, one, so, so Kelsey did it from a perspective of, I want to be around leaders, so I'm going to fly across the country once a month to get leadership. I don't know, Georgia and Colorado, they're not close, okay? In, in America, Georgia, Colorado, not close. So you have to fly. I mean, driving would take days. She flew over there at least once a month to get mentorship. Are you willing to spring for the cash and do that to get the mentorship and get the leadership? And then vice versa goes on PJ side. As a leader, when you have a team and you have this remote team, are you traveling to the places where your team are to do the training and to help your team in those areas? That's, a, that's something I've done okay with in certain states that are my natural path of movement, but I haven't been willing to drive to some states because there's no airport that you just drive in, fly into. Um, so <laughs> so that's been something I need, I need to work on. I appreciate the, the little call out, but leadership, they're investing in their team and their team in return is wanting to invest back in them. So uh, love that. Okay, Deanne, are you un unmutable or do I have to yeah, unmute you? I can unmute. Okay, good. I just have a training going on behind me and I don't want it to be distracting. I know, I know. So, We're so glad you. you're here. Go for it. Can you answer okay. the same question? I feel like this is like family feud and I need the question re like repeated. Okay, well, we'll repeat the question. So the question is throughout COVID, because COVID started 2020, um, how did you corral your team and help the people see it as an opportunity rather than a hindrance? Perfect, so I thought that was the question. So realistically as a leader your team looks to you to be the confident per person who's going to take them where they want to be and i think as a leader you can't show that you're worried about what's going to go on that you're confident in leading them in that direction i mean if you have overlapping leadership it's also easier to fall into alignment because you're all part of the system and i would say that i had to more take on that leadership role and show that confidence that this is the direction we're going and i think that anything in general even on a personal level, it's about you finding the evidence that you need to make it a good thing. So yes, reminding yourself of all the great things that are gonna come out of this, because if anything else, it's made me more busy. You know, all my questions that were in the chat were like, how are you guys managing the time? How are you guys doing this? I mean, even just listening to Kristen, I'm like, oh, just write it on Facebook when it comes to your head. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm in back-to-back -back appointments because of Zoom. Like literally, I don't have five minutes to go to the bathroom and I'm like, okay, do I pick up my phone <laughs> in the middle of the appointment to share a message? But maybe, you know, and I, I think for me, COVID or the zoom era, it has allowed us to reach more people back in the day. I mean, and I've been in this business, probably one of the longest, it looks like on here, but like I did, I'd have to fly to different States to close people down just to make clients. And I'd have to outweigh, does that make sense? Am I going to go all the way to a different state for like, how many thousands of dollars is it going to bring in my pocket that it makes sense to go do that? And today I don't have to do that. So I'm literally able to help coast to coast and attract so many people. Also what COVID or zoom has done for us has made those same clients willing to conduct business because my baby boomer clients, they want to meet in person, right? But not anymore. They're totally fine with zoom. They've acclimated to the new way. So that in itself is huge because I've been able to bring on way more clientele versus having to go to them versus having to drive. I can do more. Now I'm annoyed. You, we used to do actual drop bys. These people talk about drop bys, right? Right now they're talking about a zoom drop by, right? Hop on a zoom with me, but no, we literally showed up at people's house unannounced like over and over and over. And Jason Bove always tells me you teach old school WFG, but that's how I was raised dropping by people's houses to make things happen. Is my internet sucky? No, it's somebody else's. Oh, okay. I'm in a new location. So. But Who is it? Ayumi. A-Y. There she is. I can talk over it. I'm really loud. So, <laughs> so I would say that COVID in all honesty, like if anything, it's made me more annoyed when people stand me up. If I have to drive to you and you're not there, 
I get so upset and it's caused me to create a better standard with me and set a better expectation for my people who now want my time more. I used to give it so freely like, oh, no problem. I'll come to your house. We'll do reviews. We'll do whatever we need to. And now today people are like, how can I get on your schedule? Right. And it was just me controlling my own time better. And I am so grateful for the transition because now it's just figuring out how do we mix both, right? How do I do the social aspect with my actual team in building those relationships, but still be able to manage a much more successful business because I have Zoom. And that's what it's done for me. So I speak into that for my team and I talk about the greatness of Zoom and all the benefits. And I think by doing that with your team, it's so much easier for them to focus on the great things and not the other stuff.